All right, welcome everyone to a casted game here. Uh, doing this one just a little bit differently uh, as it's a replay. Uh, couldn't quite catch it as it was live, but I wanted to get the recording out here for you guys. And uh, we're doing a good old fashioned 1v1. Uh, yesterday we had a really big regicide match, so don't forget to go check that out. But uh, this one, uh, this one here looks like it'll be pretty exciting. So I'm going to spend a quick moment here just introducing our two players. And uh, so on the south side of the map, in the color green, playing as the Delhi Sultanate, we have Bakmagun. Or Bakmagun? Could be pronounced that way, actually. And uh, on the other side of the map, on the north, playing in the color red, we have Praetoria as the Holy Roman Empire. So... Um, I'm going to switch to full map view here, and uh, this is the Altai. Oh, or is it Altai? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it's, it's Altai. It is Altai, and the biome is Asian Subtropical. So, for those who maybe haven't seen this one before, or maybe haven't played it in a hot minute, Altai, as you can see here, there's mountain ranges on the west and east sides of the map, um, or it can also spawn on the north and south. All the action really happens in the middle here, with a couple flanks on those sides where you can do sneak attacks and things like that. Um, so, I'm going to point out a couple other quick things here. Um, on, on the red side, in the north, with Praetorian, um, he's got his gold mine right on the front line there. It is facing his enemy. Uh, it's pretty exposed. Um, you know, I always, I always watch for that sort of thing, because <clears throat> that can definitely play a role with early aggression and how things play out also got a stone mine close to his base along with another stone mine really not too far away from that uh, could be easy to get a lot of stone really quickly so that'll be interesting to see what he does there um, he's got his scouts coming home to roost already they've got tons of sheep so uh, he's getting after it and uh, he's also got deer and lots of berries next to his base so that's looking good that, that part's looking good and uh, going to the color green here um, also got sheep under his town center, looking good. Berries uh, being gathered up. And his gold is also actually on the front line here as well. Um, also exposed. Could, could also be a target. He's got his first temple with a scholar. So things are uh, playing out pretty good here. And uh, he, his stone mine here is in the back of his base. It's you know nice and removed from the front line. Uh, he could pretty easily get a villager on there or two. Uh, in a few minutes or something, so that'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Also got deer right next to his town center, looking good. All right, um, I'm gonna check in with the players on their camera to see where their scouts are at. Praetorian's got it looks like only one. Oh no, he's got a second scout. Okay, he's got one going south, uh, south now west, heading through his enemy's territory. Uh, checking out if there's any lingering sheep or just getting a sense of, of where that town center is at. And he has scouted it out, as you can see. Uh, his other scout is uh, just kind of chilling back here by the base. Uh, looks like he might be microing the other one. Or, uh, he, he, he garrisoned all those villagers in the town center. Almost took out that green scout. Uh, it was very close. He, he came very close to machine gunning it down, but not quite, unfortunately. Uh, but the Akin Chapel's about to go up, so that's looking good. Um, and then real quick, Buck Magoon got his scout going north and west, uh, trailing after uh, some of the others that are out there. And uh, this is the one that almost died. He, it was That was a close call. Uh, but he, he has survived quite another day. I think he's just got the one scout. I think Buck Magoon only has the one. Dome of the Faith is getting built. It is... Almost up. So, we're about to see age 2 real quick for both players. Yep, so the Akin Chapel's done, so Praetorian is now in age 2 at 4.5 minutes. Bakmagoon, seconds later, also around 4.45-ish, um, is also in age 2. So we're, we're looking good. Uh, very early age ups here. That's uh, pretty good. You love to see it.
Yeah, just checking a couple, couple things in one of the uh, Discord. Excuse me, I'm stuttering today. Uh, Discord chats uh, with the hometown center group that I'm part of. Uh, checking in on some things. There's there's some discussion about tournaments going on in there, and um, also discussion about uh, just games that have been going on and uh, replays or castings and uh, just general interesting uh, comments about the game. So it's a fun group. Um, I, I always put a link in the description of videos in case if you guys want to check it out if you're newcomers. Uh, feel free to give it a give it a look. Uh, the group's very welcoming and. Uh, very open newcomers and very accommodating if people have questions or anything like that. Um, it's kind of a big group of guys just trying to help everyone get better. Uh, so it's it's pretty good. So consider that. It's very chill. And uh, I'm going to check back in with a couple players here. Looks like Praetorian has his first outpost going up next to the gold mine. Very smart. He's getting a defensive position ready uh, in case there's any attacks that come through. Getting houses built, making sure he's not population limited. Got a barracks coming out on the field as well. Love to see that. You know, Holy Roman Empire players do love to bank up those resources and really save up for that fast castle uh, right at about that 8 or 9 minute mark, which it looks like he might be doing with all that gold. Um, villagers go into the tower and uh, keep that horseman at bay, but they are coming back around. So we gotta watch out for that, but... Um, you know, having an extra barracks on the field that early, as I was saying, uh, is helpful because they can get more infantry on the field in those few minutes leading up to the fast castle. And, uh, Bach Magoon, he's laying, he's laying the pressure here. He's got horsemen and scouts. He's trying to attack the villagers, but Orion's ready. He keeps jumping them right in the tower and then right back on gold and then right in the tower and nothing's slipping past him. He's, he's ready. Um, he's got a smart strategy going on here. And oh, just in time, he manages to get the villagers back into the tower. Barely saving them. Nice job, nice play. Uh, he's got a scout. Here's opponent's base. Scouting it out, seeing what's going on. Uh, there's a scholar inside that stable, as you can see there, for the deli. Uh, which means those units are getting excuse me, produced very quickly. Uh, that extra production speed, it, it makes a difference. And Pretoria now has enough resources, and he is building the Burgrave Palace. He's going for Fast Castle. Uh, we're not even eight minutes into the game. It looks like he's probably going to be able to get this by eight and a half. Um, yeah, that'll probably take him about 35 seconds to get that built. A blacksmith going up, too. Love to see it. Uh, Bach Magoon has got two blacksmiths over here as well, so he's, he's researching very quickly. Um... Mind you that Delhi doesn't have to pay for their research, they only have to be patient, they just have to wait it out. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, but extra scholars helps offset that, uh, uh, I wouldn't really call it a disadvantage, because not paying the resources and um, just getting free research is pretty good. It's it's hard to, uh, hard to ignore that being an awesome thing. So... That's uh, very good. Uh, you might be hearing Discord uh, popping off. I'm uh, not sure if that's coming through in the uh, YouTube uh, recording here, but uh, just group chat's going nuts here. So, uh, Burger Palace is up at 8 minutes 45 seconds, and uh, that's a fast castle for Praetorian. He is an H3, and he's about to pump out all these bad at arms here. You've got 8 queued up, and... Uh, you know, with scouts are running around the field, they're they're keeping the scholars busy at the sacred sites. There you go. One of them is captured. Two of them are captured, actually, for green. Uh, he's walling off one of them. Buck Magoon is putting up these wooden palisade walls uh, with archers around, using that special deli ability to have military units build uh, the defensive positions, which very very nice ability. Um, you know, I think if any other civilization had that ability, um, I honestly think that it would be far more powerful even, uh, let's say if the Holy Roman Empire had that ability. That would be so disgusting. They would never lose a game, I swear. But even, you know, the Delhi having that, it makes sense. It's, it's really good. It helps balance them out. Um, they're already powerful with their war elephants and their scholars, uh, but that, that extra 
bonus with the military and uh, the walls. It's it's hard to ignore that. That's a really that is a delicious ability. Gotta say. Yeah, these, so these men at arms here, they're shredding the horsemen and the archers. They might be outnumbered, but they are laying the hurt. As you see. The scour trying to heal the units up. It's not not fast enough to save some archers. And more infantry are coming out. Men at arms out the wazoo. We're we're gonna see lots of those coming out here. They're just every every four seconds. And you can bump that down I, to every three seconds in the late game, which is just insane. Have a man at arms every three seconds? That is so OP. I love it. I absolutely love it. Villagers just steadily going onto the field. Our Victorian has a lot of wood. He could uh, he could build some rams, perhaps, go for a ram rush. Not a very dirty as well. And, uh, yeah, the man-at-arms just killing down those archers, one at a time. And the horsemen are in full retreat as the man-at-arms just keep on the offensive. They're going after the scholar. Strike him once with the sword. Don't quite kill him. Strike him again. That scholar's going down. It's... it's uh, er, nope, nope. Gets away. Okay. Alright, so that, uh... Scholar did uh, slip away, but there's another group of men at arms in the flank. Oh, excuse me, still waking up here. Alright, we've got a big battle going on here. We've got about a half dozen at least units on each side, maybe a dozen. But... The Praetorian is now inside of his opponent's base. He is. He's in there. He's playing the hurt. Losing units. Go for the villagers. Oh, dirty. Dirty. There you go. Alright, that's. Yeah, that's tough. Checking off these walls real quick here. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, these man at arms are killing them off, and you're hearing. Uh, in the background there, those relics, because Praetorian already has uh, his prelates on the field. They're gathering up relics left and right. He's going to start putting them into towers, and, uh, you know, if he starts building extras, or maybe a castle or something metal. Uh, we'll be seeing things, things get gobbled up here. So, very early, uh, early rush for the relics. Do like seeing that. These man at arms, they are few, but they are powerful. They they have absolutely disrupted Bakmagun's economy here. As Praetorian just keeps going after the villagers. I think he's just got one man at arms there in that single area. There's a few others near these berry bushes to the west. Um, and I think there's yeah, there's a couple others near a sacred site. Uh, but yeah, a good portion of his army is is dead, but he's still he's still in it. I mean, he's got things going on here. We're in one of those periods here where there's just a little bit of a slight lull. Um, as, uh, you know, players are kind of rebuilding their forces, kind of gathering up resources for this uh, next stage of the game here. But Praetorian's got units kind of in position, uh, getting ready for 
another sneak attack or something. Uh, ooh, the crossbowman. <laughs> Buck Magoon, he's got a sneak attack here. He's got crossbowmen and archers that have found out these Matadons near the uh, easternmost sacred site. And uh, he's shooting them down. I think one of those Matadons is... Oh, they survive. Just like you might have gotten killed. Quite. And a meowing cat behind me. Just received his uh, second breakfast. He is looking for a third. Looking, he's looking pretty cute over there. He's he's chubby and happy, just uh, living his life. Love to see it. And uh, all right, so Praetorium is getting stables built up here. Looks like we're gonna see a mixed army coming out. Single wolf that's trying to kill uh, the mana arms. The wolf almost succeeded. It bit that mana arms. Took him down to two health. That that was a close call. He needs a priest. Ooh, all right. So Bakmagoon, he's got a play coming in here. He's got crossbowmen on the front line. He's coming for Praetorian. I'm gonna switch the camera around here now, as I just did in. Now we're going to watch this from a slightly different angle. Man does still have man at arms in the back of the base though. Attacking villagers. Giving some headaches. Okay. Making sure he's not totally on the defensive. And uh... uh What's the villager count? I gotta wonder. So 52 for Praetorian. Buck has 48. So about the same. I mean, there's not like a huge advantage on one end or the other. That is... What a good boy. What a good chubby boy. For those who uh, are not aware, Brodzilla, uh, the man himself, Brody, my cat, uh, he, he is with the inspiration behind the channel name, actually, uh, being such a huge Godzilla-sized monster. Uh, that is where he gets his name, the Brodzilla. Uh, this is my humorous way of paying homage to that. So, Praetorian has captured, or is capturing, this green sacred site here. Uh, he came in with horsemen, he came in with lens connects and spears and Ace men here. He came in with the whole nine yards and took that out very quickly. bakwangoon has been really going hard trying to get sacred sites uh, for victory, and uh, gotta hand it to him. You know, gotta gotta put some respect on that because he's been really active on capturing those sites and walling them off and really making sure that he's being proactive. So that's we've seen some solid play there from from Bakwangun. Um, who I'm, I'm told, uh, I believe he's on Twitch, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which, which if that is the case, I'll go ahead and look that up after the match here and uh, might throw that into the uh, uh, video description uh, to try to help him out and get him some viewers. But uh, do consider checking him out sometime. If, if you're looking for other streams, um, you know, certainly check him out, see what's going on. Got a big battle going on here, Mad Spears. Horsemen, elephants. The elephants have arrived. Oh. And uh, they are tower elephants. These are the bad, scary ones. Uh, these guys. Oh god, they are they are horrendous to deal with. <laughs> I hate doing the tower elephants in a game. One of the uh, one of the things I least desire to see is when my opponents bring those onto the field. Upper Torrens capturing another sacred site here, or uh, uh, decapturing it, or whatever you want to call it. English being my first language, and I still can't speak. That's what a shame. Yes, yeah, so I mean we're seeing some palisade walls from Torrens as well here. Um, trying to 
Trying to block off any sort of sneak attack there. Right. So we're at 20 minutes into the game out of 22, and uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, since it is a replay, but we are in the endgame. We've got uh, pretty much two minutes left, and uh, that would suggest that something's about to happen. I, I gotta wonder if we're going to see a surrender uh, here from one player or the other, because... Um, I don't think someone could kill landmarks in two minutes like that. Not unless they had a ton more trebuchets on the field, which neither player does. Uh, I think we're going to see a surrender victory here. It's just a question. Who's it going to be? Who's going to be? Who's giving up? Corin has his knights, or not knights, horsemen, sorry, in the forest. They are ready to charge in another direction. They go for the charge back to base. There you go. Now this trebuchet is really working down that castle, but the emergency repairs... Oh, those are... Those are that can really keep this castle alive. Um, you know, without having to waste stone to repair it, too. That's, that's the craziest part. This is just a free repair, and the war elephants, they are focusing it down. They're battering it with their tusks. And, uh... That's, uh, that's not looking good for the castle. It's a screenshot here. Cinematic mode? Oh, yeah, getting all the screenshots, man. Getting them all. That's looking pretty interesting. And, uh, okay, so we saw a surrender. Uh, it looks like Bach Magoon, uh has called white flag. He says, good game. Well played. And uh, he has surrendered, and Praetorian is our victor here. So, yeah, that was, uh, gosh, that was action-packed there. Especially at the end. Uh, well played, both players. Saw lots of, uh, lots of aggression going on, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well played, thank you for watching, and we will catch you guys in the next game. Have a good day.